So this is a data task that could be relevant to both paper 2 or paper 3 because uh, selection is covered both at year 12 and in year 13 and evolution as well. So first of all just looking at what we've got um, it tells us that phytosaccharides are a type of carbohydrate. I know there wasn't a question in your booklet about that but they could have asked a question um, where you needed to use that, that, that knowledge. So the idea is it a, a monosaccharide, disaccharide, polysaccharide um, so you could, have, you could have needed that information. Other things to spot as we're reading through, uh, 45 volunteers. In the, one of the questions, it wants you to say that's a small sample size, so it's not representative. And it's always a bit of a blur between what is a small and what's a large sample size. In some, I've seen some questions before where this was counted as a large sample size, this sort of number. Uh, but generally, I think it was below 100, and it's a sort of a medicine sort of study, then, yeah, it's a small sample size, not representative. Other things, uh, looking at the data, um, straight away these numbers are subjective. It's sort of, yeah, you are getting a, a number out of it, so you could probably say it is quantitative, but it's not giving you, yeah, it's very subjective. Different people's opinions could be slightly different. Okay, it's not truly trustworthy. Um, other things, just look at the trend. So time after applying the cream. So this cream, as it's so time after applying the cream, you can clearly see that more people are saying that the uh, the spots are getting smaller, and more people are saying they're getting less red as well. Um, and it's more than half as well, because this is out of out of forty five. So more people are saying that these things are happening than not. But it's not 100% effective. It's not 45 out of 45 for each of those. And there's no statistical test uh, comparing those that didn't have an, say there's an improvement and those that did. So perhaps something like a chi-squared test. Um, couldn't use a t-test because there's no mean values. But you could use a chi-squared because you have frequency in different categories. So you could have uh, volunteers that, uh, one category of volunteers where it was, appeared smaller, didn't appear smaller. And then you could have your uh, observed being 34 for this one, and in which case it would be 11 for those that didn't. And your expected numbers would be half of 45. So that is another thing that you, you could do. So there's no statistical test. Okay, on to the questions then. So the first question, uh, does the data show the spot cream is effective? So again, it's a yes and no. So the yes it is, you have to say both of these, it, they're getting smaller and they're, and they're getting less red for one mark. And the second mark is you have to use data from the table to support this. Okay, so the idea that over half and over half are reporting um, that they're getting smaller and less red. There are no, lot, uh, a few no points. So again, these are sub subjective. Okay, people's opinions could be different. Um, it's a small sample size, so it's not representative. And there's no statistical test carried out, so you cannot see if the the difference between those reporting and improvement are not as significant. Okay, looking at the second part of this, uh, what can we take from it? So we can see the aim, so this is telling us the aim of the investigation. Um, so the idea is, they're trying to see if you use both, does it reduce the number of resistant bacteria on the skin? Or, or does, and also, does it reduce the amount of bacteria in general on the skin to improve acne? Um, so you've already looked at one treatment on the other resource, and this is a different treatment. So looking at mixing benzoyl peroxide and um, and antibiotics, it does tell you here that benzoyl peroxide there are side effects, so you might need to use that bit of information uh, later on. Again, small sample size, uh, and also looking at this, it's only doing it for four weeks, so we, you know, you can't see any long term effects at all uh, from using this treatment. Something else to point out, it wasn't one of the questions, but um, links to require practical 6 uh, from, from year 12. Uh, so we've got dilution here. Um, so the original sample must have been diluted by a thousand times. Um, and why would they have done that? Because it would have been too many to count. So the actual number of bacteria, yes, this might be uh, 6.9, there would be 6,900 bacteria in the original sample taken from the skin per centimetre squared. Again, per centimetre squared it makes the results comparable. Um, because if you have a larger area compared to a smaller area, you have a disparate, a different number of bacteria in each. It's not comparable. Other things to point out, 
in each that you've got a similar trend. Using this cream does seem to cause a reduction in bacteria in every single uh, trial. And we've also spotted the aim was to try and get rid of all of the bacteria and none of them are zero. Okay, none of them are zero, especially the resistant ones. You've got resistant bacteria uh, still in the skin. Okay, so let's go through the questions then. Uh, so question two, which antibiotic is uh, most affected by benzoyl peroxide? Um, so it's C. Okay, because the, the numbers uh, fall the most, you could ideally you do a percentage change. Uh, so you've gone from five to three, so the difference is two, divided by five times 100, and that is more than the percentage drop uh, for D. Question three, what percentage of the bacteria present in week two are resistant to antibiotic C? Okay, so for this one, um, you do uh, 3.5, okay, divided by the total number of bacteria, so you're adding each of these up, so it's 6 plus 3.5 plus, um, plus 2.9, um, comes out to be 12.4. So it's this divided by the total, so 3.5 divided by 12.4 times 100, and it gives you 28.2%. Okay, so a bit of an evaluation. Does the data support the statement, benzoyl peroxidase reduces the number of antibiotic resistant bacteria on the skin? So yes, because both of them fall. Both of these have fallen. No, because you've still got, you've still got some left after week 4, they've not reached 0. And also you don't have any data beyond week 4. Okay, so you cannot see if this continues long term, or if it would reach zero, let's say after 10 weeks. Looking at the last question, using both resources, so make sure you use both, evaluate benzoyl peroxide cream and antibiotics together is the most effective. So really that's asking you to do a little bit of a comparison between the two, uh, treatment for acne sufferers, and also comparison within this graph as well. So let's agree, see what the agreed points are with that statement. Okay. Um, so you can see that using benzoyl peroxide and uh, using the uh, antibiotics does reduce uh, the number of resistant bacteria. Okay, so it's increasing the likelihood that the antibiotics will work. Also, the idea that if you use the benzoyl peroxide with antibiotics together, because they both work on their own, and that's actually another point, because antibiotics work, and benzoyl peroxide works and you, by itself, and you can see that here, the benzoyl peroxide by itself is, is, is doing this. If you use them together, then you could use less benzoyl peroxide, so that's going to cause less skin damage, and that links to a bit of the information from before. We have several against points. We've already pointed out it's a small sample size, so it's not representative. We also have no statistical test to see which of the two is better. Is this better? or is the phytosaccharide better, or any other current treatment better? So we don't have a statistical test to prove which is the best treatment. Also linking to resource A, phytosaccharides are also effective, and there are fewer side effects. Okay, so we saw from resource A that phytosaccharides did reduce symptoms, and there were fewer side effects with that. But from both, none are 100% effective, so that's another mark point. And for both A and B, the benzoyl uh, peroxide and phytosaccharides, we do not know any long-term effects or any long-term side effects. We don't know if it works in the long term, we don't know if there are any long-term side effects.